Hello. Here we are continuing our series on the power unit, breaking it down into its constituent elements. And today we're talking about the turbocharger. Describing what the turbocharger is, I think of it as at the back, a windmill, and at the front, a leaf blower. I'll try and explain a bit more. The back half of the turbo is the turbine. What we're doing here is collecting the exhaust gases from the combustion engine and feeding them into the turbine, and that's spinning a wheel inside, a bit like spinning a windmill. What that's doing is collecting waste energy from the exhausts and turning it into useful energy, spinning a shaft that runs throughout the turbocharger. At the front end of the turbocharger is the compressor. What that's doing is taking air in from the atmosphere, compressing it and then pushing it into the combustion chamber of the combustion engine, making sure you're getting more air in there so you can have better combustion. The drivers are allowed three turbochargers per season. If they have to use more than that, then they get a grid penalty. F1 power units have a turbocharger, as I've explained, in order to increase the power, increase the efficiency of the combustion engine, and make sure that we're propelling the car down the straights as quickly as we can. As we've described, the rear of the turbo, the turbine, is interacting with the exhaust gases, so interacting with the combustion engine. The compressor, again, interacting with the combustion engine as it forces the air into the combustion chamber. But also, what you can see here, in the middle of this turbocharger, is actually an electric motor. This is the MGUH, and the turbocharger does work hand in hand with that MGUH through most of the lap. So as well as the turbocharger being linked completely and utterly with the combustion engine, it's a big element in the ER system as well. Some of the challenges of the turbocharger are the temperatures involved, especially at the turbine end. So you can imagine the exhaust gases coming out of the engine at over 1,000 degrees C are getting channeled into this, this element and then spinning the wheel in there. Everything has to be able to uh, withstand that 1,000 degrees C heat. It's rotating at over 100,000 RPM, which is pretty fast, especially for the electric motor element. It's a little bit hard to see when you look at this, exactly where that sits in a power unit, but it sits in the centre of the V. So if you remember, the combustion engine is a V engine and it sits right through the middle of it. You may be looking at this turbocharger and thinking, that doesn't look very much like the one that I imagine in my road car, and you'd be right. Typically with a turbocharger, you see the compressor and the turbine back to back. We've also slipped in the MGUH in between the compressor and turbine, so that makes it a little bit odd if you consider what you would normally have in a road car. With the shaft inside the turbocharger rotating at excess of 100,000 RPM, the part that the lubricant Petronas Sintium plays is massively important. The turbocharger is a key element in increasing the thermal efficiency from what you might see in your road car of about 30% to the F1 power unit of over 50%. It's a little bit hard to unravel how much of this is due to the turbocharger, but I'd say somewhere in the region of 5% of thermal efficiency comes from the way that this works with the combustion engine. The increase in the thermal efficiency is due to the use of the waste energy from the exhausts and through the way that the compressor pushes the air into the combustion chamber. I hope that's giving you some more details of how the turbocharger works in the F1 power unit. In the next episode, we're going to talk about the MGUH. <laughs>